everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. Today I have a DIY loungewear set tutorial for you. So I'll be showing you how to both pattern and sew both the top and bottom of this loungewear set. While I am going to be showing you how to pattern this set by using your old clothes as a guide, I have actually created a pattern for you that you can purchase from my Etsy, which is the first link down below. Patterning is definitely the most challenging part of any sewing DIY and it just takes a super long time. So I definitely wanted to give you guys an option to just purchase that for super cheap down below so you can get right into the sewing. And in my lingerie set pattern that includes both the top and bottom to this look, the top pattern does include a crop line in case you wanted to make the shirt cropped or longer. So I actually decided to go with the cropped shirt length to be a little sassy, but obviously you can choose whatever length you want. For this lingerie set, I chose to use this gorgeous navy blue fabric. Oh my God, I just love velvet so much. But of course you definitely don't have to use velvet. You can literally use whatever stretchy lingerie type material you want. Just make sure it has good stretch to it. And I know that working with knit fabrics can be a little bit scary, especially if you don't have a serger, but for any of the serged seams that I'm going to be sewing, you can just switch that with a zigzag stitch. Or you could use any other type of stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Because I did decide to use this gorgeous velvet fabric, I am going to start off with some tips on how to sew velvet. So if you do not want to work with velvet or you don't care about learning about velvet, I do have the chapters down below so you can skip over the velvet part. Oh, and by the way, all of the sewing equipment and supplies that I'll be using throughout this video is linked down below as well. So without further ado, let's just get into the tutorial. So first off, you'll notice that velvet has a fuzzy texture that results from the fabric's pile. So when you feel the fabric in the up and down direction, one way will feel smooth and the other way will feel rough. On the right, I'm holding fabric with the pile running down and on the left, the fabric has the pile running up. So as you can see, when the light hits the fabric, it produces two very different looks. Most garments you'll find made of velvet have the pile running down, but I've chosen to create my garment with the pile running up to get a deeper, richer color. Just make sure whatever way you choose, you cut all of your pattern pieces out in the same direction. Because of the pile, the velvet tends to move as you sew it. But there are a few solutions to keep your fabric even as it goes through your machine. Personally, I just like to use a ton of pins with no space in between and take them out one by one as I sew. But you could also hand baste your seams and some people even use a walking foot to help feed it in evenly. If your fabric is wrinkled, you wanna try and stay away from your iron and try to use a steamer instead. This is because if you press down on the velvet with the hot iron, you could crush the pile and ruin your fabric. However, if you absolutely need to iron your garment, place a piece of scrap velvet or something else with a pile of its own, like a towel underneath it. The pile from your scrap fabric will support the pile in your actual velvet garment and keep it from getting crushed, but still try and steam whenever possible instead. Now, if you wanna pattern this garment on your own, grab a t-shirt that kind of fits in the same way you want your shirt for your lingerie set to fit. I didn't really have that, so I just grabbed a regular old t-shirt and traced out the actual bodice of the shirt, making sure not to include the ribbing, the sleeves, or anything like that. And I'm just gonna pattern out the front because the back is basically the same thing. Now I'm gonna use this base to make adjustments. So I'm going to crop the hem a little bit more. I'm going to increase the width of the shirt to make it more of a looser fit. And I'm gonna draw that new side seam. Now I'm going to extend the shoulder seam even more because I wanna create this kind of dropped dolman two-piece sleeve. And now I'm going to draw a new armhole and looking at this, I would probably drop the armhole an inch or two so you have some room under your arm. This isn't the actual pattern I worked from. I patterned everything digitally and I'm just kinda showing you how I would pattern it from a shirt now. But yeah, the only thing I would change would be dropping the armhole like an inch, but other than that, they look pretty similar. Now for the sleeve, I'm going to kind of take this line from the arm's eye and match it up to be the top of the sleeve. So I'm going to like draw that exact line over so that I can start with the sleeve. Now I'm going to go back to my original shoulder seam and extend it even more so that that can act as one of the sides of the sleeve. Then I'm gonna draw another line perpendicular to that to be the hem. Lastly, I'm just gonna take a French curve and draw a curved line to be the other side of the sleeve. Now just make sure to add the labels and markings to your pattern pieces. And I drew my grain lines to be perpendicular to the hem on the shirt and the sleeve. For the neckband, draw a rectangle that is double your desired width and the length of your neckline minus one or two inches. And then add seam allowance. 
Now the pants are a little bit more straightforward. Just find some pants that fit you, like how you want your loungewear set pants to fit you and trace that. You can work from leggings, yoga pants, whatever, and then make adjustments from there. If you're working from leggings and you want it to be more like my loungewear set, I might add a quarter to a half inch on the sides to make it less tight because my pants are a little bit more loose fitting and very comfortable. If you want a more flared leg, mark where the knee is, which is about halfway down the pants, and then flare out the hem a couple inches on each side, starting from the knee area until it's the width that you would like it to be. On these particular yoga pants that I'm patterning from, the waist was not high-waisted enough, so I just extended that waist as well. After that, just add your seam allowance, trace the back, and repeat the process, and you are good to go. Oh, and don't forget to label your pattern and mark the grain line. Now for the waistband, draw a rectangle that is double the desired width of your finished waistband and then the length of the waistband should be the circumference measurement of the pant waist. Now this measurement should be actually larger than your natural waist measurement because you want the pants to be able to get up over your hips and then the elastic that you thread through your waistband is going to be your natural waist measurement and it will cinch the pants in to fit you nicely. And don't forget to add seam allowance. So really quickly, if you did decide to get the Etsy pattern, go ahead and print that out, and you can print out the top and bottom separately or both together. After everything is printed out, I'm going to assemble my pattern pieces by just matching up the lettered corners of each page and then taping that down. Make sure you do tape the entire pattern piece so everything is secure, and then choose what size you want to create. I'm choosing a US size 2 and cutting on that corresponding line. After cutting out all my pattern pieces, it's time to cut out my actual fashion fabric. So make sure whatever fabric you choose has a lot of good stretch in it. I'm choosing to work with a stretch velvet, but obviously you can work with any stretch loungewear material. You should have 10 pieces when you're done cutting. Now place the shirt bodice pieces right sides together and pin along the shoulder and side seams and fold the sleeves in half and pin along the inseam of the sleeve. Now you're gonna sew along the side seams, shoulder seams, and sleeve inseams. I'm choosing to use a serger, but you can use any stretch stitch on your home sewing machine, like a zigzag stitch. And these particular seams don't actually require a lot of stretch, so you technically don't have to use a stretch stitch, but I still definitely recommend it. Now fold the neckband piece right sides together in half and sew along the short edge. To connect the sleeves to the bodice, the sleeve should be right side out and the shirt wrong side out. The curved edge of the sleeve will connect to the bodice side seam, and the straight edge of the sleeve will connect to the bodice shoulder seam. Now just tuck the sleeve inside the shirt and pin it at the arm's eye and do the same thing on the other side and then sew. Now fold the neckband wrong sides together and divide it into quarters using pins. After dividing the neckline into quarters as well, match up the pins and begin stretching the neckband to fit into the neckline. The neckband will be a couple inches shorter than the neckline so it can hug your body. So take your time and stretch and pin carefully. Now sew along this line and if you're not confident with how you pinned it, you can sew a basting stitch first. Now just hem the shirt and it's at this time that I realized I actually wanted to go with the cropped length that I provided on my pattern. Moving on to the pants, we're going to start by pinning up the front and back crotch seams and then sewing those. Next, take your pants and place them right sides together and pin and sew along the out seam. After that, just pin and sew along the inseam. For the waistband, fold it in half right sides together and sew along the short edge. Now fold the waistband wrong sides together so that seam that we just sewed will be hidden inside. Make sure the seam on the waistband lines up with the center back seam on the pants and you can tell which side is the back of the pants because the back waist will be higher than the front. Now sew and attach this waistband on but leave a small hole in the back where that seam is. Leave a hole about two inches wide so that you can thread your elastic through. I'm using the safety pin method to just thread that elastic through the waistband. After the elastic is through the waistband, take the two end pieces, place one on top of the other and sew that and attach it together. I wanted my elastic to be extremely secure, so I sewed a box with an X in the middle. Now pull the elastic completely inside the waistband and we are just going to close up that hole that we left earlier. The last step is to hem the pants and make sure before you hem your pants, you try them on and see if you need to cut off any excess length. But after that, you are done sewing and you have a brand new loungewear set.
yeah, so that is how you sew this lingerie set. Hope you enjoyed. I wanted to create something that was actually practical for us to be wearing during this time because, you know, none of us are really going anywhere. I know I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, let me know if you try it out. And if you do try it out, please send me a picture on Instagram. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. Oh, and do follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you are not already. Again, just a reminder, all the supplies and equipment I used throughout this video are linked down below. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, my Etsy pattern is the first link down below if you want to use that instead. But I think that is everything. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.